Come on, hug somebody and tell them, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. Go ahead and shout it to the other side. Say, he's good. Y'all shout back to that side. He's good. He's good. Regardless of what it looks like. But tell somebody he's still good. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's still good. <laughs> Go ahead and turn with me to Romans chapter 16. I want you to find verses 25, 26, and 27. Romans 16, the very last chapter of Romans. And I want to look at this, what's been phrased as doxology. And uh, and so I want us to look at this. Don't want to hold you too long today, uh, but long enough to just encourage those of us who need strength. Anybody need some strength in here? (laughs) Anybody feel like you've been body slammed this week? Seem like you're going to win about 12 rounds with the enemy. <laughs> but tell somebody he's still good. And I'm still here. I should be dead. Sleeping in my grave somewhere outside my mind. But I'm still here. Sometimes you got to close down what other folks saying. You got to pull the shade down because it really is not what, you look, what it looked like is who God is. So Romans 16, verse 25, it says, Now to God, who is able to strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed. And through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only, the only, why? God through Jesus Christ to whom be the glory forever amen I want you to look at your neighbor directly in the face dead in the eye and I want you to say with every bold conviction in your body God is my strength God is my strength. Thank you, ushers. Let's celebrate our student ushers, our youth ushers. Let's celebrate our youth choir. Hallelujah. Zach, I saw you. Yes, sir. I saw you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is my strength. Mm. In both, Aaron, in both the Old and the New Testament, when you look at the word strength, it's normally it's an attribute of God's character. And this character of God through the demonstration of strength, what it does, it supports and it protects the believer. Strength, y'all, is a quality or the quality that only comes and directly comes from God. 
It matters not how healthy or mentally sound we are. We can be, as the old folks used to say, you can be strong as an ox. You can have an IQ that is uh, over 140. But you can still, if you don't have strength from God, you can still have no strength. Are y'all with me? Our strength doesn't come from our own human capacities. I need someone to hear me. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're going through, you cannot do this on your own. Neither can he or she do it for you. Because often, too often, we are quick to look and pout over what we don't have and we miss what we actually have. Y'all, we don't need, I know this sounds like a cliche, but we don't need more stuff. We don't need more opinions. No, we just need more space for God to work. And what I'm learning is that all this stuff and all these opinions and all this and all that, what it does, it makes it so uh, congestive in my life that God doesn't have space to really work in my life. And what God wants to do in the space that we allow him is to supply strength because remember, only strength comes from God. No matter how strong I am or how many degrees I have, I can still be weak because I don't have God or the strength of God being supplied in space that he needs to supply it in. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, listen here, he says, God's grace is sufficient for you. Now, I know a lot of us, we've been reading that scripture over and over, but do, do, have we really tapped into what it's actually saying? He says, God's grace is sufficient for you. Come closer. Grace means an undeserved favor. It's something that I don't deserve. So what he's saying is, what you don't deserve is all you need. <laughs> Let that register. What you mean? Well, our problem is I'm always going after what I think I deserve. I think I deserve the, the, the car. I think I deserve the money. I think I deserve him. I think I deserve her. I think I deserve my way. We're always going after what we think we deserve and always comes up short and disappointed. But God says, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you what you don't deserve and what you don't deserve is all you need. Why don't I just concentrate on what I don't deserve and stop worrying about what I think I do deserve? Are y'all with me? Because he says, if I can give you what you don't deserve, that means you didn't do it. And when you know you didn't do it, then here come the rest of the scripture. My power is made perfect in your weakness. It's when you know you couldn't do it on your own that you now have power to move on. Maybe the reason why I'm hostage and stuck in stuff is because I'm trying to get out on my own strength, which is really no strength, but when I can be uh, uh, thankful to God that he gave me what I didn't deserve, then God says I open up spaces to give you power to move on from stuff you cannot deal with on your own. Is this registering? Listen, come closer. It's when we don't fit in. It's when we don't match up. It's when we're not accepted. It's when the chips are down. It's when we're mistreated, misused, misunderstood. Here it is, it's exactly those times when God has strength or has space to make what? To perfect power in weaknesses. Now, what is a weakness? A weakness is when I know I cannot do it without God. And I know it's going to be strange when I say this, but hear me, hear me. 
It's okay to be weak. Did anybody get that? It's okay to be weak. What you mean, Pastor? I was always taught, you better be strong. You know, check out your chest. Keep your head up. Better not cry. What you mean? It's all right to be weak. It's all right, watch this, to admit that we're fragile. Why? Because at any given moment, something can break us. You ain't that hard. And it's time out for us to pretend like we're unbreakable. Because as soon as something hit us and we start cracking, what we do is go hiding. Because we don't want nobody to see us in our fragile moment. Because, watch this, I don't deserve for folk to look at me like this. Instead of concentrating on what we don't deserve, what God going to do through our fragile moments. Watch this, it's okay to admit that we're vulnerable. At any given moment, y'all, I know you saved and sanctified, filled with the ghost, but at any given moment, you and I can be exposed. So we don't have to portray uh, like we got it all together. Look down your road and say, you don't have it all together. Yeah, you cute. You cute, you got your hair right, all that stuff. Got your smile right, got your cologne on, perfume on. But, but, but you ain't got it all together. I know you walk up in here every Sunday front like you got it all together. You got all your T's crossed, eyes. I know you do. Stop front, I know you do. But I just want to remind you, you don't have it all together. I know you look over there looking at it like, mm. Honey, if people really knew you, they'd say, mm, too. Go ahead and remind somebody, just in case they missed it, you don't have it all together. And say to them, that's okay. It's all right to be scarred. Can I talk to some scarred folk up in here? I mean some folk that you're gonna be through some stuff yeah. and uh, it'll take you all day, every day for the rest of your life if you wanna tell your whole story. Do, do I have some folk who are, who've been scarred and you got the scars to prove it? So tell them, don't get it twisted with the dress or with the suit or with the, don't get it twisted. I got my best on right now, but don't get it twisted. Do I have some real folk who got some scars? Scar! Yeah, you in church, but you're scarred up. Yeah, he, you've been delivered, but you're still scarred up. Ha! Why do you say, it's all right to admit my scars, Pastor, because at any given moment, we can be reminded of our greatest pain. <laughs> so you don't, don't act like it don't still have some sort of effect on you. You can shout and snout all you want, but let somebody bring up your scar. You can say God all you want. But let somebody bring up your scar. And let somebody know when you scratch or when you nibble on that scar, that stuff had the tendency to bleed. But how many of you know that it can bleed all it wants? Because you are covered by a blood that has made you whole. So I want to remind you, don't hide your scars. Don't you hide your scars. Don't you cover up your scars. Don't you try to put makeup on your scars. Your scars are your story to reveal God's glory. If it had not been. Show it to him. If it had not been. For his glory. help you understand my story that's why you got scars Deacon Hush 
let folk know that you should have died in the fire. But God! And if you've got a scar, that means you're still alive. And that means God ain't through with you yet. When God gets through with me, I shall come forth. Tap somebody say, he still got something for me to do. But I can't do it with my own strength. I need his strength. That's why you're still here, all scarred up. That's why you're still here, all fragile. That's why you're still here with your vulnerable stuff because God isn't free with you yet. Get, get, look at your neighbor, give him the hands. I ain't got time to listen to that mess. <laughs> I, 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 I ain't studying this stuff. I know I'm here for a reason. <laughs> listen what it says. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. So my weakness, that which I'm unable to do, Jeremy, becomes the condition or the prerequisite for strength, that which God is able to do. So it's my identification of what I am unable to do that I obtain recognition of what God is able to do. So I have to identify what I can't do in order for me to recognize what God can do. The reason why I cannot recognize what God can do is because I've not identified myself in a place that I can't do this. I can't take this no more. I can't handle this no more. There's some people in your life you need to let go. There's some daughters and sons you need to turn loose. There's some husbands and some wives that you need to let God handle. There's some stuff that you cannot control on your job. Now, I know your finance is low, but just start praying to God and stop buying stuff that you don't need. God is the only one who can handle it. Somebody shout, God is my strength. I want you to say it like you're me. Don't play with me. Say, God is my strength. <laughs> Watch this. This is, this is exactly the summation of Paul's concluding thoughts of this letter at Church of Rome. In this doxology, write this down, doxology. It's, it, doxology means the expression of praise to God. So he always ends a letter in a doxology. It's a praise to God. Paul expresses that God's strength and God is our strength by saying now to God who is able. He didn't say, Minister Crane, who's willing. He said, who is able. Able to do what? Able to strengthen. In most translations, it says establish. Establish, it means only God can set up what needs to be set up in your life. And if God is the only force who can set it up, it's only God who can close it down. Okay, okay, okay. Whatever has been set up in your life, only God has the strength and the power to close it down. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what they said. I don't care what you've been going through. If God set it up, only God can close it down. Only God can prove it. And if God can prove it, only God can do what? Disapprove it. Only God can confirm and authenticate. It's not about appearance. See, we get caught up on appearance. God says, I'm, on, I'm, I'm caught up in what was authorized and what's authentic. See, you can look strong, <laughs> but really have no strength. And you can look like the weakest person because you don't got what everybody else has, but you're really the strongest one. So don't get caught up in what you have or don't have or what you look like. The only thing I need folk to understand is that if God is in you and God is strengthening you and establishes you, then you may look like the weakest thing in here, but you're really the strongest. I don't need 
need folk who can have a pretty shout and say hallelujahs and smile. I don't need those type of folk. I need folk when my life is turned upside down who can at least get a prayer through. I need folk that when the enemy is trying to mess with your mind, you can stay still and say, for God I live and for God I die. But check this out. You can't die for something that you don't live for. Okay. You'll catch that on your way home. See, we got to get caught. We got to stop all these cliches and phrases in the church. No, for God I live for God. Are you living for God? Because if you're not living for God, you're not going to die for God. And you got to see the enemy for who the enemy is. You got to smell him. You got to sniff him out. You got to know when he's coming. You got to know when it's a trick and when it's a lie from hell. You got to know that. You don't have to run to the preacher and say, preacher, I need you to find it. No, no. You should know. You should have enough anointing on you that you'll know the devil when the devil shows up. But it's not about appearance because the devil looks real good. It's about if he's authorized or if it's authentic. <laughs> okay. Only God provides stability. Only God gives security. Your security is not in your job, not in your 401k. It's not in no Obamacare or Trump care or whatever care. It's about casting your cares. Okay, 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 y'all got this. It's about casting your cares upon the Lord. Okay. So, so how is God my strength? Then we're going home, watch this. He says, according to. Now, according to, y'all, write this down, it means through. So when you hear the word, a phrase, according to, it means through. So God is my strength, here it is, through, as the text says, my gospel. Now remember Paul is writing this, he says, my gospel. Notice, he says, my gospel, which simply means he is a preacher of God's gospel, and God uses the gospel which he and other preachers proclaim to strengthen believers. So he's not saying this is a gospel of mine. No, he's saying I'm, I'm taking this thing personal, right? I'm taking it personal because he has entrusted this gospel to me to preach to others. So he says it's my gospel. You all should be so entrusted with God's word that it becomes yours. Amen. Not just a book or a tablet, but it should become uh, your gospel because it's in your heart. It's written on your heart and in your mind. And so he says, it's my gospel. But watch this. Gospel means good news. It's God's message. It is the standard. It is the guideline that we live by. So you have the gospel, uh, which is good news which is a standard but listen what he says he says but it's also according to the preaching of Jesus Christ so not only is it through the gospel but the gospel has another layer it's also through Jesus Christ watch this it is only gospel it is only good news the standard if it is preaching of Jesus If folk are not preaching Jesus, it's not gospel. Because Jesus becomes the standard, no I'm sorry, he becomes the substance that sustains the standard. The gospel cannot become standard until it has substance to sustain it. That's why folk can just talk and do poems and all those inspirational speeches. But only when you have substance Jesus sustaining the standard that gospel becomes good news. But check what he says. It is the message preached by Jesus. It can be preached by Jesus or preached about Jesus. So when we say preached by Jesus, what did Jesus preach? Go to Hebrews 2. I need to call your attention to Hebrews chapter 2 verses 1 through three. Listen what it says. It says, therefore, 
we must pay, here it is, greater attention to what we have heard. Paul's there. Remember, we just came out of a series talking about he who has ears, let him hear. We talked about the seven churches of what? Of Revelation. We talked about all the seven churches that he was talking to uh, uh, on the Isle of Patmos. Watch this. Therefore, we must pay greater attention to what we have heard. Here it is. Why? So that we do not drift away from it. What does that mean? That simply means what you have read, don't leave it as though you have not read it, but you got to learn how to apply it. It's not enough just to come to church and look churchy on a churchy Sunday morning, but every day you got to live and apply word. Y'all with me? And guess what? The enemy knows when you're not applying it and he knows when you are. Because he's going to ask permission of God. And God already knowing the whole context. He wants to strengthen us. He's going to allow the enemy to come into our lives and disrupt some stuff. But if you are solid on Christ, he can't wreck nothing. But if you drift away, you will sink in whatever scheme he has plotted. Y'all with me? Go back to the scripture. For if the message declared through angels was valid and every transgression or disobedience received a just penalty. penalty. Go to verse 3. How can we, here it is, escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Yeah. It was declared at first through the Lord. So what did Jesus preach? He preached salvation. And it was attested, affirmed, confirmed to us by those who heard him. The question is, have you heard him? And if you heard him, are you preaching it as well? So this is the message, salvation. But watch this, what is the message about Christ that was preached to others? It's simply John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten that whosoever shall not but have somebody shout life it's not about friends it's not about possessions it's not about popularity it's not about happiness it's about life. This is what grieves me. We are so worried about friends and we don't have life. We so worried about possession and what we're riding in, what we're living in, how it looks, and we don't have life. We so worried about popularity. Who knows my last name and who knows me and how many friends I got on Facebook that we don't have life. And let me tell you, let me tell y'all something. Let me drop a footnote. Some of y'all need to stay off Facebook. Y'all need to stay y'all hips off of Facebook. Because once you hit send, it's done. And let me tell you something. You know what I've learned? It ain't so much of the young people. I can understand them being on Facebook. It's not even really the millennial generation. But it's y'all who are above 50 and 60. Don't have the right subject and verb agreement. Just, just talking. Putting all your business out there. Just in case, just in case they're on your road. Let's not say stop it. You making a complete fool of yourself. Stop! And we have the nerve to my, we got to do something about these young folk in this social media. No, I'm so glad it didn't come out in the 60s. Y'all be plumb crazy. Do we have 
have life. And life comes through a relationship with God through Christ Jesus. But secondly, or thirdly really, it talks about according to the revelation of the mystery. Y'all see that? So you're strengthened by gospel and through Jesus Christ and now it's through a mystery. So the question is, why is it a mystery? Why is it God's long kept secret? And what is this? Well, it pertains to the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's truth. Truth is, how do I begin to know this God? That's truth. How can I begin to be accepted by this God? That's truth. Because truth says, if I know God, then I know everything that's true. And if I allow God to know me and be accepted by him, then I don't have no leaves to hide behind. That's truth. So the whole mystery is, how do we get to the truth? I don't have to sugarcoat it. I don't have to pretend to be something that I'm not. I just want truth. Adam, where are you? I want to be free and transparent, not so much before y'all, but before God. See, the problem is, is that if I'm fronting with folk that I do see, that means I'm fronting with the God I don't see. See, it becomes more easier if I can be real with God and God knows everything, why I got to hide with y'all? Because y'all ain't my judge. <laughs> but again, why is this gospel, Jesus Christ, true? Why is it a mystery? Because I don't care how smart you are, how many degrees you have on your wall, human intellect cannot discover this truth. It must be revealed, revelation, uncovered by God. Here's what Matthew 16, 17, you remember when he was asking who the men say I am? They was telling him all these lists of prophets, then he says, but well, who do y'all say I am? And, and Peter jumped up and said, you are the Christ, right? And he says, Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who's in heaven. Watch this, how many of you, maybe not now, but you had or you know you will, you're going to go through some stuff or go through something that is going to absolutely almost blow your mind. How, raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. That should be everybody in the building. Okay, okay. This is what we got to learn how to do. We got to learn to understand that if we're going through that type of foolishness and madness, you got to learn that the only solution is not in you, but only God can reveal this. How many of us have went through some stuff and then we just got, we just got so down and so depressed and we didn't want to deal with nobody, we didn't want to come around and we still didn't call on God. What, let me ask, what, what, what's wrong with us? Can I just pause for a station identification? What is wrong with us? We come and sing, we come and sing, God, you are my strength. We, you know, we come and sing, glory to God, oh, near the cross, oh, glory to his name, lean on the everlasting arm. We sing all that stuff. And if, it, if it's a really hot sermon and you're feeling good that day, you will shout. <laughs> but as soon as the enemy smack you, You curl up in a fetal position. Yeah. Use that glory. Oh, no. Shut up. <laughs> the only way I would know what's going on in my life, I have to get to God. Aren't you tired of going through the same old stuff? Wasting the same old sweat, same old tears, same old stress, same old depression? Look down your road, tell him, grow up! Revelation comes through scriptures. Word. Not a man, not a woman. But word, don't come to me until you first went to the word. I can't give you what God has not already qualified you to get. <laughs> Jesus Christ is the word that became flesh, which means 
The only way we can access God is through Jesus Christ. And check this out, it's in the text. It is to all nations. I don't care if you're black, you're white, Hispanic, Latino, whatever you are. It's to all nations. He don't deal with races and skin color. He's talking about nations. Don't you let this world get you caught up in all this racism and they don't like me because of who I am. The devil is a lie. There's only one kingdom of God. There's only one heaven. He don't see skin color. He sees if Jesus is in you or if he's absent. Church folk, Christians, kingdom, disciples, don't get caught up in the madness of this world. We're too caught up in stuff that has nothing to do with God. And it's killing our growth. In fact, it's stunning us. We ought to have power that we can join right here and pray and folk become healed. Oh, I believe it right now. If somebody here has an illness, has cancer, has a brain tumor, we ought to have enough power through him that we can pray, be on one accord, and that stuff is gone. But it won't happen if you are now not in the Word. So here's the question. He got all these answers, all these solutions in the Word. Everything you need is in the Word. Tell somebody, everything you need is in the Word. Everything. Everything you need in the Word. So here's the question. <laughs> if everything I need is in the Word, why aren't we all just rushing? <laughs> to the word to discover who God is what he has for me how to have the peace of God and peace with God why are we not just rushing hmm it's right here in the text because the purpose of the revelation of scripture here it is is the command of God here it is to bring about obedience and faith <laughs> The reason why I don't rush to it like I should is because when I come to God, I got to come correct. I got to be willing to obey him and trust him. See, we're real good in seeking after stuff, seeking after gods and pleasing ourselves. Here's the problem. The problem is seeking him and pleasing him only. That's the problem. Why? Because God desires love and he desires trust. To be obedient to God means I love him. I ain't worried about y'all saying nothing to me. No, no, I'm right here. I know. Come here, come here. The question is, do I love him? Because if I love him, I will obey him. So I have to question myself, do I really love him? Because if I love him, then I would deny myself. I will fight and beat this body, put it in submission to God if I really love him. So don't look at nobody else. Look at yourself. Do you yourself love God? If that's the case, what am I practicing that's disobedient? And what is it about you that you don't want to give it up? Oh, I love him. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Shut up. No, you don't. You can't love the Lord if you're still constantly practicing something that's disobedient to him. And that's why I'm not running to the word because the word would get me in check and I don't want to be in check. But I want to check out something else. <laughs> And then I come here on Sunday, oh bless the name of Jesus. <laughs> and do I trust him? Because if I love him, I trust him. Yes. See, I'm trying to get to trust in God and I don't even love him. See, y'all missed that. 
Yo, yo, mister. Somebody said, you just got to hang on in there. You can't hang in there if you don't love the one you hanging with. Yeah. God desires love and trust. Yeah. And then comes, here it is, the benediction. The last verse. He says, to the only wise God. Now, I know some of you, oh, it's 1208. We're making good time. You should have to leave early today. 1208. Um, I know sometimes we got to go to work. And you got to go to work. I ain't mad at you. Go to work. Sometimes you have other engagements that you got to get to. I ain't mad at you. Well, I'm, I'm talking about y'all jokers ain't got nothing to do. You ain't got nothing to do. You just tired of sitting. You just tired. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Let me drop a footnote. Now I said, those of you, don't, get, don't, don't look at me side eye, those of you who got to go to work. I know you got to be there by 12, 15. That's fine. You got to go. I understand that. You got another engagement. You, got, you should have an engagement every Sunday, but you got an engagement. You had to leave early. I understand that. Y'all don't look at her. She got to change the baby. She got to change the baby. <laughs> she, she, <laughs> then she putting the finger up. God bless. She got to change the baby. She made sure she grabbed that baby with some pamphlet. Hallelujah. So, so <laughs> you got to understand, you don't have nowhere else to go. Y'all hear me, hear me. I know we laughing, but I'm serious. Watch this. I've always been taught, and that's the old fashioned, uh, that, that you, you need a little old fashioned in you. Look at somebody down the road and say, you need a little old fashioned. Yeah, 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 you need, that's what's wrong. You got so new, new, you don't know what new is. You need a little old fashioned. I was taught you never leave before the benediction. And I wonder why you don't leave before, and I, I, again, let me just offer this disclaimer. I know you gotta go to work and you got some, I, I understand that, I ain't knocking that. Don't look at me side eyed, I'm just saying. Not every Sunday. Why don't I leave? Because here's the benediction. The benediction is to the only wise God. Look what it said, what's that mean? He said, he is the author of the gospel. He's the only one that is worth our worship. <laughs> he is the only one that's due praise forever so why do I need to hear that pastor because you need to hear that when you leave out of this place because we're coming in here to get refueled for the hell you got to go through and if you don't have hell you have pleasure make sure you don't lose your focus and your pleasure so what happens is he says I got to remind you before you leave boot camp on Sunday that you only have one wise God and that wise God deserves your worship which means you don't have time to waste dealing with madness you gonna have some madness this week so you got to be reminded that as you leave this place make it your duty your 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 honor your your whatever you have to worship God because he's the only one who's worthy of your worship don't worship madness don't worship stupid stuff worship God because let me tell you something when you worship stuff that's not of God it drains you I ain't talking about just being mentally fatigued because you've been doing stuff physically I'm talking about spiritually just drain even though you're mentally fatigued even though you're physically fatigued you still should have some spiritual energy about you and then he says don't praise anything but God don't lift up foolishness don't keep foolishness going if you see somebody then you gotta learn how to call them out call them out the right way because I don't want you out there scrapping I'm just saying you just gotta know how to call folk out especially if they're a child of God and if they're not a child of God you gotta learn how to leave it alone God can only be approached praised only through Jesus the Christ that's it that's it that's that's how you can proclaim God is your strength see it sound real good didn't it 
See, when I first started, y'all about jumped out of your, your, your shoes. God, wow, God is my strength. Y'all just went, almost went crazy when I said that. <laughs> now you know what it means for God to be your strength. It's through gospel. It's through Christ. It's through prophetic scriptures. And it's through a command of the eternal God. If you want to be strong, stay with Jesus, stay in that word, and live it. And that's right, mama. You didn't get 97 year old for no reason, right? You, you, you know something, don't you? Live it. I didn't say mama was perfect. I said mama know something. You're not perfect, but you ought to know something. God is my strength. Now this is very simple. Here's the call. Here's the call. As I say, where are you? Here's the call. Here's the call. Do you have strength? Do you have strength? I hear, hear y'all saying, yes, that's great. But to that one or that two who you can admit today, I'm tired of front. I don't have strength. The call is to you. And even for those of us who we look like we got strength, for some moments, ain't no time to play, ain't no time to be front and looking around. This call is to every individual. Do you have strength? <laughs> Do you know without a doubt you're going to make it? I mean, whatever you're up against, whatever you're struggling with right now, whatever you're going, going on in your house, at your job, whatever's in your mind, do you have serious doubt if you're going to make it or not? If this is you, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. And we'll pray with you and pray for you. So everybody got strength in here. Come on. Come on. Come on. 